smoke breeze blow you up here so I normally come to my office you know. um, sir can I get some help with my homework sir teach us something about calculation of time rotation and time can I get some help help with my homework now sir please let me see it That's on it, sir. Cause I don't know, it's more about number number thing and how time is different from one plate to another plate. Oh. Yes? A simple match this, man. What? Well, simple job. <laughs> yeah, actually. What am I going to show you about now? Right. Now, what is happening here yeah. is that you want to find out um, the difference in time between one place and another place. Right, cool. So, like, for example, we are in Jamaica. Yeah. And you want to know what time it is in England. Yes, so we can work out that easily. Now, um, I'm not sure if you know this, but all of this we can calculate this um, due to. What well, I see now? What I see? Come feel like I feel bend my neck to talk to you about this. Thank you, sir. Alright, cool. Yeah. Alright, so what happened is due to the rotation of the earth, yes, we are able to calculate. Um, time from one place to another cool. it has to do also with imaginary lines which are known as lines of longitude yes sir we learn yeah. about that. We learn about it separates the earth into different time zones oh. now how we work this out is that uh, what you, sir? What the you? earth takes 24 hours yeah. to make a complete rotation and if we look at a complete rotation mm -hmm. a complete rotation is a, is a circle and a circle has 360 degrees so if we write an equation we would have the equation reading 24 hours equal to 360 degrees, degrees. Yes, sir. now from that bit of information we can start to do some real work now if 24 hours is equivalent to 360 degrees, degrees yes. then we can work out other things Backwards. such as All right, so we would find out that one hour is now equal to 15 degrees okay, because fair. we want to get one on this side, right? Yeah. So therefore we divide 24 hours by 24 because any number divided by itself must give you the value of one. one. Yes, sir. Me know so that. we get one on this side and the second equation rule says that anything you do to one side yeah, you have to do it to, to the, the next, next side, side. Yes, sir, so if that, we divide by 24 that. over here we have to divide by 24 over the next yeah. side so therefore one is equal to 360 divided by 24 which gives us 15 degrees so one hour is equivalent to 15 degrees now if we want to break it down further we can and we can say no 15 degrees, oh, yeah, degrees is sir. equal to yeah. one hour okay. now if we want to find out how much one degree is equal to uh -huh. then we do something similar remember any number divided, divided by, by itself, itself must give you give the value, value of, of one, one. Yes, sir. so if we divide 15 by 15 we get one yes. and we do carry that over to the next side and we divide one by 15 like but guess what one 15 can go into one we would have a problem so therefore we have to convert that one into 60 minutes oh, yeah, and 60 now minutes, we have sir. a big number that we can divide right, yes, sir. so 60 divided by 15 will give you four, four. minutes, four minutes sir. Four. i hope you are working out with me over there now. yes sir then them this, oh you want my book for writing all right sir i can't worry about number mine i can to think that sir simple simple. all right so so far we have 24 hours is equivalent to 360 degrees and that makes one hour equal to 15 degrees and we break it down further and we get one degree is now equal to four minutes and with that we can do almost anything we can calculate the difference in time from one place to another place yep all right now you all know that the sun rises in the south, right? Mm. No? In the rising in the south? 
Uh, the sunrise is in the north? No? Hmm. So where does the sun rise? Ah, uh, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So that would mean that people who are living in the east would see the sun before people living in the west. That would also mean that their day has already started before those people in their west, in the west. And if their day has already started, that means they are ahead in time. And I don't mean ahead in time like, oh, we can get the lot of numbers and we can win the lot of now or we can see what is the next episode of The Flash or we can know anything in the future. What I mean is that we, they are uh, they are powers ahead of people in the West. So their day has already started, they have seen the sun and they are ahead in time. Now what we're going to use that information for? It means that anytime we find ourselves moving towards the east, then we will be going ahead in time. Anytime we find ourselves moving to the west, we will be subtracting time or we'll be going behind in time. So we can say that east increase, west get less. East increase, west get less. See it with me. Cool, 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 cool. East increase, west get less. All right, so we're gonna use what we know to figure out what we don't know. So east increase, west get less. One hour equal to 15 degrees. One degree equal to four minutes. And anytime we're traveling to the east, we're gonna increase in time. Anytime we travel to the west, we're going to decrease in time or subtract time or west get less. Ease increase. West get less. Ease increase. All right, cool. Now, all right, watch this now. I'm going to give you some to work out over there now. If the time at the prime meridian is 1 p.m., what would be the time at 75 degrees east? Inside they are getting hot though. <laughs> Inside they are getting hot man. Or is the question? Or is the question that is hot? You can't figure out the answer to that. I see I see your mind working, you know. Alright, watch this now. Now some people are able to figure out the answer in their mind. I we call those people mathematically inclined. But for those who are not so mathematically inclined and can't figure it out using numbers in your mind, then nothing is wrong if you used the line. What, what do you mean by the line? All right, I'm going to show you the line method. So you get your line, as you see on the screen here, you get your line, and then you're going to divide up the line into 15 degree intervals. Yep, 15 degree intervals. Why 15 degree intervals? Because it's easier. 15 degrees work out to one hour and you want to be moving in hourly increments. So for example, one o'clock to two o'clock, two o'clock to three o'clock, four o'clock to five o'clock, etc. So we're moving in hourly increments. So, you finish draw your, your line? All right, here's my line. Look at my line. I'm going to bring it up on my computer screen right now. All right. So there's my line on my screen. Now, if you divide up all the lines, and you're going to be putting down so for example we can start at zero and then the next line beside zero would be 15 degrees and the line beside 50 degrees would be 30 degrees line beside 30 would be 45 line beside 45 would be 60 and then 75 and then 90 then 105 then 120 then 135 then 150 then 165 then 180 and no no more because 
remember we're dealing with a circle and a circle has 180 degrees so if you have the prime meridian which is zero running down the middle then half of 360 is 180 so we'd have 180 on this side and 180 on that side so zero is in the middle 180 degrees on the east side east side and we have 180 degrees on the west side west side west side out oh, we don't ban me for throwing up gang signs or anything like that yeah <sighs> let's go all right so 180 on the east side east side is it and 180 on the west side cool now we're going to use what we know to find out what we don't know all the while not only in geo class that is a life lesson use what you know to find out what you don't know cool all right so what do we know well if you said that it's 1 p.m. at the prime meridian then definitely that's what we know so far so what we want to do on our line now we're going to write 1 p.m. on the prime meridian line now if we know what time it is at 1 p.m. and we know that there are hourly intervals and anytime you go to the east you're going to increase in time anytime you go to the west you're going to decrease in time then we know that at zero which is 1 p.m. if we are going to move one hour ahead then the next time at 15 degrees would be yes that's correct 2 p.m. and 30 degrees would be look at them right at the man 30 degrees would be 3 p.m. that's correct and we would all right so we could also do all of it for the west side too. So if the time at the Greenwich Meridian or the Prime Meridian, which is zero, the time is 1 p.m., then the time at 15 degrees west, you're going to minus one hour from 1 p.m. So the time at 15 degrees west would be 12 noon. And the time at 30 degrees west would be 11 and then 10 and then 9 all of that so if we fill out all of this it, it, it is a little tedious I must say it's a little time consuming but guess what the time that we take to fill out all the numbers on this line and all the times on this line if it takes us five minutes then that's all the time we need because all the answers to every possible question using that information are now written in front of you. Look at your line, if you don't believe me. So the original question, what time would it be at 75 degrees east? So all you do, trace your fingers to where 75 degrees is. And look, tell me what time is there. You should have 6. If you have 6 p.m., then you have done it right. And so if I say what time will it be at 30 degrees west, what time would it be there? All you have to do is go back to and then you would realize that the time at 30 degrees west would be 11 a.m. Easy so far. So with the line, with the line is personally my favorite because I can't seem to get it wrong if I use a line. If you use your mind and you use an equation and you do some calculation and maybe you make a slight mistake with one of the calculations, then you may get the number wrong or may get your answer wrong. But if you do the line method, the answers are laid out right in front of you so that you can see them. Cool? All right. All right, so we can work out some more now. I'm going to give you some to work out now. And you tell me what answers you get. All right, 
we'll see where it gets to. Let me see your answer so far. Alright, so we'll pin it. Alright. Cool. 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 Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Ten out of ten. See? I'm telling you now. Geography is very easy, you know. You just have to understand the basis of the thing. And the basics of it. It's very easy. Yeah, man. Alright. Alright, well on them. Let me give you a... Let me write down a channel. Let me write down a channel. Alright, so when you, when you go home, and you can look on this channel. It's called addicted to geography that's that's one word so don't separate it you know so it's addicted a d d i c t e d and they have number two and they have geography so addicted to geography so you search for this on youtube you can find other very interesting videos you can find other very interesting videos about geography topics just like this one. You see like how you figure it out you get all correct. Yes, sir. You see you get all correct in out of ten. Thanks, sir. Yeah man. Alright, so we talk later. Yeah man, you don't know no, sir. Right. Blessing no. Give cool. thanks for your help. Yeah, you're a good teacher, no, sir. Yes, another geography crisis solved. Alright, I'm gonna go back to the people in work that I was doing over here earlier. East increase, west get less. East increase, west get less. East increase, west get less. East increase and west get less. East increase, west get less. East increase, west get less. When we say east increase, west get less. Big up to my virgin Milton Brown for that little memory gem that we use. East increase, west get less. East increase, west get less. East increase, west get less. East increase, west get less.